I don't know if you guys know this, but Zer, you know, yes, he, he he sells stuff. Sometimes it's, it's pretty good. I've heard. He's in the tower hangar this week. What's he got? I don't know stuff. He's got scout rifle, shotgun, and sniper rifle telemetries. Use them on your weapons. They level up faster. Sounds pretty good to me. And he's got plasma drive and emerald coils. Those vehicle upgrades, upgrading those rare blue quality sparrows, and heavy ammo th synthesis. Return five for one strange coin. Let's get to the good stuff. Titans, you get the, I believe, never sold before insurmountable skull fort. Now, just because Zer hasn't sold this before does not make it the best thing in the world. It comes with 112 max discipline, which is pretty good, but this is where the helm peaks. The bonuses are melee hits, replenish grenade energy, eh. replenish health whenever you pick up an orb of light, eh. and with the main bonus being you automatically get the transfusion bonus with your storm fist. So all kills with storm fist immediately regen health, and you also spawn with melee energy, but that part doesn't really matter. I mentioned this for warlocks last week, but this helm does have some crota utility. If you're level 32, you could basically punch a thrall in the head and you would regen all of your health on that fight. And transfusion is a pretty handy ability for titans. Would I recommend Insurmountable Skull Fort over Ruin Wings and or Armamentarium? No. Would I recommend it over Helm of Saint 14 in a raid setting like Crota's End? Tough call because trying to weigh each of the bonuses against each other individually is rough. Skull Fort keeps you alive, but the blind effect from Saint-14 has much more utility, and personally, I roll with Helm of Saint-14. Should you buy this helm? Well, I would not say that it's an urgent buy in the slightest, and newer Titans, I don't think this is really worth the buy. I think it's worth considering buying it if you have trouble surviving on the Crota encounter if you have a lot of extra money. Otherwise, Armamentarium, Ruin Wings, Helm of Saint-14 are all better. No urgency on this one. Hunters get Lucky Raspberry. First off, this has an insanely high stat roll, maxing out at 160 discipline. I'm starting to come around to the Raspberry. I wasn't too fond of it before, but I consider it in slightly higher regard than I used to. The other bonuses of more fusion rifle and heavy weapon ammo are bland, but very, very good. Arc bolt grenade chaining farther is decent. And also spawning with grenade energy is, that's pretty good for PvP purposes. I don't think it's the best or the worst of the hunter exotics. I think it's middle, slightly upper tier, and I'm not sure how much farther arc bolt grenade change chains I would guess uh, it would be a couple of more hits. Should you buy it? Much like the Skull Fort, I don't think there's any urgency on this purchase. It is a solid piece of armor considering the other bonuses and the stat roll, but it does lock you to arc bolt grenade if you want the full potential of the armor to be realized. Arc bolt is a good grenade, but I don't know if this bonus puts it into the top tier, although I have been thinking a bit less of the helms compared to what I thought of them a couple of months ago. If you use arc bolt grenade a lot, or if that's your main grenade, or you don't mind using it, then I would say go for it. If you're mainly a gunslinger, then I don't think you need this. If you bought the don't touch me gloves last week and you're short on coins, you can pass, although they are definitely used for much different situations. This is going to be a judgment call for you guys on whether or not you should buy it. Warlocks. In case you missed on Starfire Protocol, they're back this week. They are literally the exact same stat roll as last time, maxing out at 155 intellect, which is great, don't get me wrong. The robes themselves, much like the Lucky Raspberry we just talked about, come with very bland but very good bonuses, more fusion rifle and heavy weapon ammo. The main bonus is get an extra fusion grenade. 
Fusion Grenade is pretty good in PvP and good burst in PvE, but I'll say what I said last week. If you have Praxic Fire and you like them, then you can pass on Protocol. Otherwise, these are very good robes if you like Fusion Grenade. And even if you don't like Fusion Grenade, much like the Lucky Raspberry, the other bonuses almost make it worth wearing on their own merit. They are worth getting more than they are not worth getting. The reason why these differ from, say, Lucky Raspberry or the Hunter Exotics is because the Warlock Exotics in general are on a bit... or on the weaker side, whereas there are definitely more debatable Hunter Exotics. The weapon of the week is the last word. I'll tell you right now that if you're looking for a PvE weapon, this is a pass. While it is a serviceable weapon, it doesn't do enough, in my opinion, to warrant buying for PvE purposes. The main reason you will want this gun is if you are a PvPer, because it this is one of the, if not the fastest, killing weapon in the game. It is the best 1v1 weapon in the game. It is insanely good in close to mid, mid-range, can't talk today, PvP. So if you're a big PvPer, this is definitely worth having if you like and or do not mind hand cannons. If you don't PvP a lot, then you can skip this weapon. If you do a little bit of both, mm, judgment call. Has to be a judgment call. And no engram this week. But you can buy exotic shards for seven strange coins. Armor upgrades. For the Hunters, we have Crest of Alpha Lupi and Yang Ahimkara Spine. The priority here is whichever one you have, and I say that because the only people who actually use these on a consistent basis likely do not have anything that is better. There are definitely better things that you should be worried about upgrading, so it is not a high priority week for you guys. Titans, you have Helm of Saint-14 and Skull Fort. It's a little weird. The Skull Fort that you can buy has more discipline than the upgrade. Priority goes to Helm of Saint-14. Warlocks have Apotheosis Veil and Praxic Fire. Again. Man, he does not like you. The Veil, much like the Skull Fort, is worth considering as a backup plan for Crota, thanks to its health regen bonuses. But otherwise, Praxic is going to get your priority. The weapon upgrades are pretty good this week. We have Hardlight, Suros, Maida, Thorn, Plan C, Yallerhorn, and Monte Carlo for PlayStation users. Priority here should be Yallerhorn, then either Truth, Maida, Suros, Plan C, and then Hardlight, Monte Carlo are in last place. Really, the top four weapons I just listed, the Suros, Maida, Thorn, Yallerhorn, could all pretty much be listed as equals. They're all really good. It just depends on whatever one you use the most. Uh, The only reason Plan C falls behind is because it is a special weapon, and I value primary weapons more than I value special weapons. That's it. That was, uh, that's Zer Week 18. Have a good weekend, everybody, and I will see you next time.